Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us this month. We're, uh, we've got quite a bit to share with you. A bit of spring is in the air for those of us in the Southern Hemisphere, and uh, there's quite a bit of change coming up. So uh, let's jump in and revisit a few things, and we'll wrap up today with looking at a bit of the roadmap to understand what's coming up with Eloqua. So just some general housekeeping. Uh, the session is recorded. As you know, each month we record these sessions. Also, some of the content that we'll be sharing today is forward looking and is indicative. What that means essentially, and if you've seen a Oracle presentation or really any technology company's presentation, they present what's called a safe harbor statement. And so that essentially is saying that don't, they don't want you to make business decisions based on the information that's being presented. Uh, it is forward looking and is indicative of what we can expect from Eloqua 2021. So on the call today is myself, Derek Bell, Director of Customer Success and Marketing at Marketing Cube. We have Matt Hemsley, our Marketing Manager, who's also assisting, and Jason O'Donnell, our Account Director. So the first thing we want to do is answer a question that was submitted by Kath from Sydney. And she asks a fairly logical question, which is, how do you pre-populate a field in a form that is a drop-down field? Good question. Well, the answer is actually quite simple. You really just need to treat that um, as you would a field merge with any other uh, field merge or pre-population on your form. But let's take a closer look at a form uh, in the design editor to get a little bit of a feel. So as an example, this is actually the form you use to register for the user group this month. And we ask you the question, where in the world are you? Um, that's kind of pivotal to us from a data point uh, in relation to what happens next and how we manage that information. And so we have that one set up as a pre-population with a field merge. So we'll always ask you the question. And what you need to do is once you drop in the contact field, or even if you're dropping in a, um, a custom field that will become a single select pick list, you then go down to the pre-populate field data area. Once you've added your your pick list and select field merge. And from field merge, you'll then be able to search for the relevant field merge that relates to that particular field. So it really is exactly the same as you would operate a field merge for email address or first name or company, for example, uh, all exactly the same. That's as easy as that. So Kath, I hope that answers your question. If you've got any further questions, just let me know. All right, let's jump into the agenda then for this month. First thing I want to do is to revisit this hide mobile, hide desktop function. Now, we mentioned this a few user groups ago, uh, and we'll explore that in a bit more detail for you. Also, we had uh, quite a number of inquiries in relation to attribution and Eloqua dashboards and what's happening there. So we just wanted to revisit that a little bit and provide you with a bit more information on that one. Then also looking at Eloqua Engage, which helps the sales team deliver on-brand comms. Again, a few more inquiries on that one. So just wanted to make sure you as the marketing team are familiar with what that is. And then looking at essentially the roadmap uh, for Eloqua. So information that we've been able to gather from the product marketing team, uh, also some information from top liners, which most of you would also have access to that you'll be able to see. So uh, let's jump in and have a look. All right, so the first one is the design editors and really making sure that we're utilizing all of the features. Now, the first thing for you to understand is that this particular feature within the email and or the, the design editors is in what we call controlled availability or CA. So controlled availability means that we need to log a service request in order to get that particular function activated on our individual instance of Eloqua. So this is a standard process of releasing new functionality. They usually have what they call... Um, it's limited availability that's not quite right but there's a step before controlled availability probably beta is probably what it is where there'd be a few customers that the oracle invite to participate to kind of test it etc so it's a bit rough and ready at that point then it comes into controlled availability which is the the final step before general availability uh, and general availability is when everybody gets access, but it's available right now. And if you're interested, and I think you will be in a minute, then you just need to log a service request. Now we can do that for you at Marketing Cube. That's fine on your behalf, or you could ask your Eloqua administrator to log that service request for you. Essentially what it enables you to do is to hide elements on mobile or on desktop to create the best possible experience. So as we're thinking about mobile first as a principle, which I think is still with us, it really hasn't gone away. It just gives you enhanced flexibility in relation to the way you wanna design and, and work your emails. 
So let me give you an illustration as an example. So if we look, pretend this is an email and areas A, B, C, D, and E are different components uh, within that particular email, you have the ability to change when you go to mobile view and hide certain components. So in this example, you can see that uh, component C has been removed. So here's one I prepared earlier. Essentially what we're looking at here is, first of all, we're in the design editor. It's the desktop view. So uh, we've just got you know, individual pieces here. There's an image, another image, you know, obviously some copy, etc. Now, when I go to mobile view, you'll notice that actually changes quite considerably. Now I've changed it quite considerably to emphasize the point. It's unlikely you would go to this level of detail to change things, but you'll notice that the, the logo is actually different and is centered versus on desktop. It wasn't, it's a different image here. And this amount of copy is dramatically reduced. So again, if I go back to full view, you can see the, the logo at the top is aligned to the left, different image and the desktop view has quite a bit more copy and content. So essentially you'll notice over here on the left-hand side, uh, there's an area called hide in mobile. And you'll notice as I click on each of these, as I said, here's one I prepared earlier, I've clicked on hide on mobile. When I then go to desktop, you can, sorry, go to mobile view, you can see now this changes to hide in desktop. So bits and pieces appear. So let me show you how you do that essentially. Let's, uh, let's create a, a third image. So I'm just going to grab a different image. Now, because I've copied that particular asset, it means that all of the configuration that was sitting behind it uh, is still there. So I just need to, to double check on that. So let's grab anything. It doesn't really matter. Let's grab the coffee cup. Okay. So because I duplicated that particular asset, it already says hide on mobile. So I'm just going to leave that, turn that off, save my email. And what will happen now is when I go to mobile, you'll see there'll be two images. There'll be the coffee cup and there'll be the young lady sitting at her laptop. You can see like so, all right? So if I want to eliminate this, because right now it's visible on both, um, I come in here to mobile and now I can say hide on desktop. So when we go back to the desktop view, now you'll see that image is gone. And so that's essentially how it works. So you just sort of think through uh, what it is you need to hide on mobile. Um, one of the things that um, a client said to me the other day was, you know, it takes mountains of, of code in order to, to make that happen versus simply being able to drop it in and flick a switch. Uh, is an absolute dream. If you feel there's value in this, and look, I think there is, I honestly, from my point of view, I found value as I started to play with it. That's when I realized um, that it was really helpful. The other time I found it helpful is quite often on a desktop view, you've got the ability to, or the, or it looks okay to sort of add space, right? So you might want to put space between things and that looks fine on uh, it looks fine when you're in this sort of view, Oops, let me move that down. you know, it looks fine. You might think, okay, well, I can take that up to, you know, even make it you know, larger and that looks fine on, on here. But then when you go to mobile, it just, uh, whoops, they're all hidden anyway. Hang on. Unhide. You sort of end up with, with large gaps from a mobile point of view. So it, when it comes to spacing, what I'm finding often is that I'm tailoring my spacing in our templates for mobile and for desktop. So in which case I would change that to hide and then, and then it may be that I don't even need the spacing when you go to a mobile view. So it just gives you greater flexibility uh, in what you're doing and to really optimize that mobile experience. Uh, now, for some of you on the call, let me have a close look. Yeah, certainly for some of you on the call, I know that you have a lot of people who are viewing a lot of your content uh, via mobile devices. And so, um, so that could be quite attractive. So again, just uh, as simple as hide in mobile and hide on desktop. And you just need to log a service request. Or as I said, you can um, email support at marketingcube.com.au and just ask for the, just call it hide in mobile, uh, hide in desktop. That's all it is. And uh, we can help you get that, uh, get that arranged for you. All right. So attribution and UTM. I, I, 
someone asked me that what does UTM stand for? And someone was like, oh, I think it's universal tracking mode or something. It's not actually, it's actually called urchin tracking module. Did it, I, had, I had no idea. I actually found that in, um, in Wikipedia. Urchin was the name of the company that Google bought. And so it was urchin that developed this whole process. So UTM, this is all part of the attribution process. So what does that mean? So we covered this, as I say, quite a bit of detail. I think it was in June. And uh, so I just wanted to revisit it because we had a number of queries and questions from people in relation to, to this process. So essentially what happens is you build your landing page in Eloqua where you build out a, um, a pretty URL like you can see on the screen right there in front of you. So it's your subdomain and then the, the 2020-0324 replay, Eloqua user group, that becomes your URL. And that's live. You can see that straight away. Now, if you place that onto Facebook or if you put it onto LinkedIn or anywhere else, um, people can click on it and they will access it. Now, if you want to bring through the attribution so that when people do click on it from Facebook or they do click on it from LinkedIn and they reach the page where there's a form, then you'd really like to be able to capture in that form the fact that the person came from Facebook or from LinkedIn. Makes sense, right? So we do that using some UTM values and we also do it using a specific type of field merge within Eloqua. The full URL, and I just like couldn't fit it all on the screen, otherwise you wouldn't be able to read it. So essentially it's, you know, it's user group dot, dot, dot. Here we go. So there's a question mark and then all of the UTM values are captured after the question mark. So it means that in our instance of Eloqua, should somebody submit this form, it means that under the field called lead source, it'll say our website. Under the field called lead medium, it would say organic. And the UTM campaign, um, you can change this around. This can happen in a few different ways. If we're talking about external sites like LinkedIn and you know, Facebook, etc., those types of things, or, or even your own website, um, you can manually just enter whatever value you feel is appropriate that makes sense in relation to that particular script. If you're wanting to track UTM from Eloqua emails, so someone receives an Eloqua email and they reach your landing page, then there is a configuration that you can trigger within Eloqua and once it's on, it's on, where we point it to these fields where it would be, I think source is Eloqua, medium is email and the campaign, we find the best way to do the campaign is to actually use the name of the email asset. So that becomes quite interesting when you look at the form submission data, you can actually see which email it was that got the person to actually register. So if you're running events and you're sending potentially one, two or three invitations to people and you number those invitations, one, two, three, then when you look at the form submission data without even having to go to any reporting, you'll just see it right there. You can see which email predominantly has driven people to convert and to register or to download the content or whatever it is that you're wanting to track. So that's some, some immediate quick wins. The UTM values that you come up with really need to underpin your reporting objectives. So it's, it's probably best to start at your reporting objectives, understanding the, the, the high level uh, reporting needs that you have, and then kind of come back and we can break them out uh, into these different areas and then then obviously build the reporting to suit. So also, as I said, he think both digital and carbon based. So <laughs> carbon based is the old fashioned pressing the flesh, you know, a CRM user, you know, submits something, you know, puts a, meets someone at a barbecue and, and drops their details into the CRM. You know, what does that look like when it comes through to Eloqua from a, a lead source, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things should be factored in to try and give you a more holistic image. So lead source, this is, we've just given you Marketing Cube's example here. The core objective is to try and avoid other as much as possible so that you actually get some granularity. Uh, we've broken things down. You'll see, for instance, with events, we look at events that we host. We look at events that Oracle hosts and also events that we may do with third party partners as well. So we sort of wanted to get that granularity uh, in that. Also for LinkedIn, we've, set up a LinkedIn company page and also LinkedIn personal profile. So again, what we're able to do is give a, a salesperson a specific URL that is unique to them that they can then post into their LinkedIn profile. 
and we can then see from an attribution point of view which is more effective is is it the personal profiles that seem to drive more conversion or is it the company page that drives more conversion so all of those things you can get that level of granularity if you're looking uh, to build out an attribution model the medium uh, often referred to as the it's the way or the platform the that the person is is utilizing to reach you so is it a social uh, platform is it email is it a, an event you know etc cetera, etc cetera. again what I've done here is literally just copy marketing cubes to give you an example some of you spend a lot more time in the channel on the social channels and so probably what you would want to do is look at Facebook LinkedIn Twitter etc 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 and maybe break those out it depends on what your reporting objectives are at the end of the day um, and then the campaign Piece. So it can either be the campaign name or as we found the best uh, the best result is usually actually the email name because it's the email name that at the end of the day has driven the conversion to the landing page. So uh, have a think about that one as well. So any questions on those points? Let's jump in and have a look at Engage and understand what Engage is. So Engage is a platform designed for the sales team, largely. Um, it's also helpful for the service team as well, giving extended members of your team access to uh, components within Eloqua, but not the core Eloqua platform that you would use on, on a daily basis. So let's have a closer look. So, it's a, a, a graphical interface. It's nice and easy to use. It's, it's available all over the shop, as in mobile, desktop, um, iPad, all those sorts of areas. It's just a web-based tool at the end of the day. But the key thing is that you, as a marketing team, control the types of templates that are loaded into the platform itself, enabling the sales team or the service team to access that particular information. So the, the key thing there, that last point at the bottom, is it in its responsive design makes it easy for sales professionals to send relevant, trackable emails on the go from their mobile phones and tablets. It's essentially a single email sent by one salesperson, but Eloqua treats it almost like a campaign in and of itself. So all of the regular tracking that is done when you send out thousands or millions of emails uh, is done with this one email sent by the sales professional. So uh, you can see all of that information stored in Profiler. So the fact that it was sent, the fact that they opened it and clicked on it, et cetera, et cetera, all of that information uh, is captured in, in Profiler. So Engage and Profiler really work together uh, to help the salesperson get that level of insight that they need. So what are the steps to having Engage available for your team? So most of you will receive, it will depend on your your uh, license level with Eloqua, but you will have potentially five or ten free licenses to you. So it is a licensed product. Um, we're talking, I mean, it's absolutely exorbitant. I think it's about 150 US per user per year. So really, that's one cost you could push off to the sales team, right? But uh, yeah, so it's, it's reasonably inexpensive, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, but I think taking advantage of the freebies is a great idea to sort of get those users on board that you know will understand and appreciate it and see the value of it. Get them to become the champions uh, and then you'll have people lining up because they want to get access to Engage as well. So we install the Engage app into Eloqua for you. We then need to create an email group specifically for Engage because it's when you save an email and you assign it to that particular email group, that's what makes it visible within the Engage app. You then build out your different templates uh, that you need. And of course you can take them away when they're over, if they're just a particular promotion in place. Then you need to create your Eloqua user account. So these, the sales team need to be users within Eloqua with access to engage only. So uh, that, uh, that step's pretty simple. And then you go live with sales. Now, in between the creating accounts and go live, you might want to do a little bit of beta testing, you know, sort of get them on board and help them understand how it works and how it functions. But, uh, but essentially, they're the steps. 
So there's a, a range of configuration options for you with, um, with Engage as well. So you'll see here, this is the Engage settings. You can see you can control a number of recipients. So if you don't want the sales team to become little mini marketing departments, sending out hundreds of, uh, you know, they can create one email and send it to hundreds of people, uh, you can actually cap the number of people that they can send those emails to. The email creation options, content options, text formatting, all that sort of stuff. It's uh, it's quite flexible. It's uh, We use it quite a bit within Marketing Cube, so within our sales team, um, and the guys love it. Uh, it um, yeah, they don't understand why more people don't use it. So here's the email group setup, and you'll see that the Engage, we just called it Engage on the left-hand side there, and then you'll see there's an additional tick box at the bottom of the setup there to make this email group available in Eloqua for Sales, which is the Engage platform. And uh, this would be an example of what a user profile would look like. This is mine, I think. Yeah, this is mine. Uh, so it won't have all of these other things. It would just have Engage users uh, as their option. And then obviously assigning the, uh, the actual license in there as well. So that's all the bits and pieces. It's really, uh, really quite simple. So that's what Engage looks like uh, as an interface. It kind of looks a little outlooky, I suppose. You've kind of got some basic ability here to, you know, personalize. Um, all this stuff can be built in. So the personalization that you can see there, uh, that's who it's going to, uh, sorry, from, I think. No, no, to, sorry. <laughs> and it's available pretty much everywhere. So as we said, so you can access it on your smartphone, uh, desktop, uh, laptop, and also tablet. So you've got loads of options there from a flexibility point of view. Any questions in relation to Engage and how that one works? Alrighty. Looks like we've got the strong silent types on the uh, line today. All right, so now for the fun part, um, 2021 roadmap review. So we don't have a lot of detail yet in relation to the next release of Eloqua this year, which is due November, mid-November. Um, but what we do have is information about uh, what's coming up with Eloqua. So I just wanted to cover off a couple of points to put some context into why Oracle is doing what it's doing in relation to the choices that it's making. The key thing to understand, I suppose, and this is no news to anyone on the call today, I'm sure, is that our customer, our customers' expectations are essentially the following. They want to be treated uniquely, they really want to be um, have that experience in real time, and it's when they're ready. It's when and where they are ready. Okay, so given all those sorts of fun things, there are pressures that are then put on us as marketers uh, and a range of challenges that can become a little bit tricky. So Kath has a question. I did have an uh, an engage question. If someone sends an email from uh, email from that is set up to come from their personal email address with the spam flags. So typically when the email is sent from Engage, let's say Jason at Marketing Cube is using Engage. So when he sends an email from Engage, it will come from Jason at marketingcube.com.au. And if the person replies, it would come back to him. If there are issues from a spam point of view, that is, I'd need to understand if that's internal. So are people having, are your people using Engage having difficulty getting emails back or are their emails not being delivered uh, to some people? So maybe we can take that up offline if that's right, Kath, but um, it may be there's a configuration missing potentially. I'm not sure, but it's no different to you sending out emails from the campaign canvas where you would send it out and have it come from 25 different partners within the business, for example. So it, it's, it's, it's pretty much exactly the same process. Let's take that offline and we'll see if we can come back. No problems. Thanks, Kath. Alrighty, so with those ex expectations that customers have, there are new challenges that really come into play for us as marketers. And you know, whether it's B2C or B2B, it's probably not that different. But one of the key points that you Oracle were making during a presentation recently, which you know I certainly endorse, is that that experience we have as a B2C consumer 
and those expectations we have, and maybe this has been exacerbated through uh, the current uh, COVID-19 pandemic situation, is that we've pushed ourselves online and some of us are having a fantastic experience with some amazing companies who totally get e-commerce and, and understand uh, that whole process. But the challenge is that as B2B uh, buyers, um, we're having those same expectations of our B2B providers as we are our B2C. And so there's a real need for the B2B world to really lift their game to, to help customers have a much better experience. So the key motivations there are increased competition, um, time is, is less, there's fear of making wrong decisions and the impact of those wrong decisions, really trying to determine value, but also looking for innovation, constantly looking for innovations. So B2B buyers are others in the same chair where they make their B2C decisions. So that's the point. Those of us in a B2B environment are really dragging into our work environment those expectations we have from a consumer point of view. And so we need to think that through. So some underlying stats. So from McKinsey & Co, 65% of buyers are frustrated by inconsistent experiences. This one annoys the absolute bejeebas out of me. I don't know why it gets me so mad that you know, with one particular in organization, you can have two completely different experiences. Infuriates me. That's when I take to Twitter and Facebook. I'm probably a bit of a carrot on Facebook at that point. I figure unless there's feedback, they're never gonna know, right? So 89% believe this is from Dun & Bradstreet, believe that data quality drives the right B2B sales and marketing campaigns. So this is the question of marketers. These are marketers responding to each of these, these stats. There's nearly you know, 90% of us agree that we need quality data in order to really drive the best possible B2B sales and marketing campaigns. Now on the flip side, <laughs> this one is um, uncomfortable perhaps for some, Organizations that are aligned to grow their revenue by 32% year over year compared to only 7% revenue growth for those with poor alignment. I don't know if you've been spending some time around Marketing Cube for the last few years, but we've, we certainly continue to revisit that concept of sales and marketing alignment and looking at ways to get everybody on the same page. It's a Nirvana state potentially, but we've got to got to try and get in that direction because there are clear bottom line uh, implications. We can't expect or anticipate every reaction or interaction with people. Oracle's key focus from a product development point of view, and certainly as it comes to Eloqua, is to help with these three things. It's you know, connected data that is unlimited, sophisticated marketing made simple, scalability and speed. So they're the three underlying principles that really are driving the innovation. And what I'm about to show you hopefully will help emphasize that particular point. I thought it would be valuable to, to recap on this, whether you've seen this or not. I mean, there's Oracle's overall vision. But when I saw this the other day, I thought, you know what, it's good to probably share that because these core values or the, this vision um, that is really driving the innovation uh, that we're seeing within the platform to help you do those three key things that we just looked at. So best in class orchestration, being able to, to do things cross-channel and multi-channel, um, connected intelligence, so understanding that you know, the data sitting just in your CRM and, and sitting in Eloqua can't be just sitting in isolation, that we need to be able to connect to other systems and other platforms in order to have greater intelligence uh, available to us in the design of our segments and our programs and campaigns, et cetera. Customer experience and usability. So that's all about you as the Eloqua customer and making sure that you, you're having the best experience you can have on the platform. The connected data kind of plays back into the connected intelligence piece and then extensibility. So first class integrations. So it's, it's clear that you know, Eloqua as a marketing automation platform can't be absolutely everything to everyone. And in today's cloud-based environment, there are certain verticals and experts within those verticals that are best of breed, uh, where it makes perfect sense for an organization like Eloqua uh, or a platform like Eloqua to connect. And if we think of the obvious ones like your, your uh, webinar platforms, you know, this is the extensibility, the, the first class integration with your Zooms and your go-to webinars and, and WebEx, et cetera. Well, that's just the, the beginning. You, know, the, you add your CRMs to that, all of that sort of fun stuff as well. 
So as we look at the roadmap, it's probably worthwhile to revisit and have clarity around you know, what can I do today? Now, there are a number of things that are listed here, and this is really just kind of a recap for you because hopefully most of you are, are enjoying these, are seeing some value in these things. And this is what we've seen probably in the last six months or so. So content blocks, I think, has been a, a huge addition to the platform. And if you're not using them enough already today, let's revisit and have a closer look at that. You can visit our blog. You'll see there's a couple of uh, blog posts there from earlier in the year around content blocks and how to maximize the use of those and get some strategy into your thinking. Um, hide in mobile and in desktop. Now this one is controlled availability. We just had a little look at that a moment ago. The video embed in landing pages, so much nicer, so much easier. Drop in your YouTube or Vimeo links and you're set, done, embedded onto your landing page, which is great. The ability to export responsive HTML to be able to build your emails within Eloqua. Uh, if you need to work with business partners or others, you can export that, make it a little bit easier uh, to share some of those assets. The asset archiving process came into play as well. So we've started with forms. We mentioned this, I think, last month. So the forms is just the beginning. There is a whole project around asset archiving. Uh, we've started with forms that will move on to landing pages and, and emails, etc., campaigns, just enabling you to not delete those things necessarily, but just simply to archive them, which means they don't show up in search results and things like that. So it just becomes a bit easier for you to manage what is potentially a growing list of assets that you've got within the platform. Uh, the dashboard enhancements, again, available today, the account engagement activity. I think at the last release, we saw further enhancements to that particular dashboard, giving you a little bit more detail, a bit more granularity, which is good. And integrations. So DataFox. So some of you may or may not be aware about DataFox, but it's a an acquisition by Oracle. Uh, and essentially it's account data enrichment. So it really plays into that whole account-based marketing angle that uh, people are looking to enrich that data as much as possible. Blue Kai, which has been an acquisition of Oracle's now for a number of years, with changes in many jurisdictions around first party data and third party data, etc. Blue Kai, I suppose, is a little bit of a shift now as it focuses far more on your first party data, but is that connector to help you do things like account based advertising, etc. So use Eloqua and Blue Kai together to to target very specifically across different social channels and um, other, other online areas. The Infinity Action Center. So Infinity, again, is a subscription service. It's a part of the uh, Oracle CX marketing stack. And Infinity, we'll see more about Infinity as the coming months roll on. We'll talk about more about that one later. The Marketing Operations Center. Some of you may or may not be aware about this one, but it's in the home button in Eloqua and the Operations Center has had a pretty major overhaul. It's a good place to go to get an overview of functionality and, and what's happening within the platform. Number of emails sent, form submissions over sort of 30 days, seven day periods, etc. CRM integration data, what's working, what's not. Have a closer look at the Marketing Operations Center. Now that is available as included within both the standard enterprise edition of Eloqua and the last time I checked for basic users it's an add-on. I need to check that though because things change and it's been a while since I've uh, had a closer look at that. All right so I just wanted to we're going to visit this one more probably early next year but I just wanted to give you an update. So we have been talking about send time optimization um, and some of you subject line optimization. So these two products are being wrapped into a product called advanced intelligence. So the four of those bullet pointed options that you can see uh, on the screen right now are part of what will become the advanced intelligence add-on to Eloqua. Now, some of you may be running send time optimization today as part of the controlled availability program. And apparently they, you will continue to have access to that. I believe it's till September, 2021, but beyond September 21, uh, there will be an additional subscription fee for the block of those four features. It's not, you don't buy one, etc. You, you buy the block uh, of those four features. That's about all the information I have at this stage. But we'll come, we'll, as I said, we'll get more information and revisit that for you uh, in the new year, probably at this stage. All right, let's go on a road trip. So Oracle CX marketing and the roadmap, let's go. So try and say this one three times really quickly, lock, block, styling. 
So we talked a little bit about this, I think, some many months ago that we knew it was coming um, and we believe it is coming. I, I can't give you any dates. That's the whole point of that safe harbour statement. But I understand we'll see some things, some significant things in the November release uh, and then also into the, the what is it, February release of next year. So what this one's going to do is let you take blocks to that next level of control to really lock down what people or users can or can't do. So remember, you've got your admins. So you've got an admin for Eloqua, but you've also got an admin role that you can assign to certain users for content blocks. And so those content block uh, admin users will be able to control, and you can see in those bullet points there, the level of detail um, that will be available. You can lock it right down completely. So all they can do is drag it in and that's it, game over. Uh, or you can allow them to drop it in and make some changes to it. So you've got a little bit of flexibility there. Okay, there is a question here from Laura. Uh, Okay, so Laura asked the question, what are the options for previewing live customer data in a bulk fashion? E.g., if you have my segment set up, can I somehow download a PDF of the 10 to 20 versions of the email with the live customer data pulled from the segment? So to fully see the personalization and field matching without having to manually preview each. Also, is there an option where Eloqua flags where field merge data may be incomplete and what that looks like before the send. Okay, that also will need further investigation. Um, Laura, I'm not aware of any ability to download a PDF like you described, but um, what I find is part, part of it comes down to confidence. First of all, knowing that Eloqua is going to do what you're asking it to do. What I tend to do though, when it comes to a, a large email with multiple field merges, is I've got my target audience and uh, I will often create a, a view, a contact view that shows me just the fields that relate to the campaign that I'm running. So it's not so much about spitting out a PDF with, you know, you know 500 emails, uh, full emails, so you can individually see that Mary, Jack and Jim and Fred and all their unique values what you really want to look at is the underlying data. So what I do is go to segments, refresh, change the contact view to suit the one that I need for my campaign. And then I export that out to Excel, depending on how big it is, export it out to Excel. And then I literally just go down the columns and look at the data. And if there are any anomalies in that data, that's the red flag to me to go back to my source data to get the source data functioning. That's, that's how I would do it. If I was uh, wanting to, if I was a bit nervous or I just needed to have some reassurance that the data that I've got is in fact the right data, that's the process that I would go through. So I hope that helps. So lock block styling. Enhanced management of assets. Now this one's gonna be super cool. So the component area of Eloqua, and I think we've shared this with you before, but now we've got some, some imagery to show you as well. The whole component library is getting a major overhaul. And, and that's, I believe, going to happen in two stages. One is this sort of experience that you can see in front of you where, first of all, you know, much larger, brighter images, more detail and information about the particular images, et cetera, better tagging so you can tag images. So it, it'll be a much better experience. Let me show you in a bit more bullet pointed fashion. So it's, it's the searching and the archiving and enhancements that will also be helpful. So at the moment, you kind of just keep adding to your image library, et cetera. And let's say you go through a rebrand, probably the one of the key things you want to do is to archive all of those old images uh, so that marketers don't get confused and grab something that really they shouldn't be using. So uh, it'll give you much better management over that whole process. The search capabilities are being enhanced, so better search searching options and advanced functionality to perform bulk actions and archiving while handling the dependencies. And that flows into a whole nother area in just a moment that's getting some major work as well. So it's one thing to archive an image. You'll know today if you try to delete some things in Eloqua, it'll say, hey, no, sorry, you can't delete that because it has a dependency, meaning the image is probably being used on a landing page or on an email, for example. 
and so you can't delete it. But you can archive, uh, you, or you will be able to, to archive, for example. Now, trying to navigate and understand those dependencies can be a little bit of a struggle. So what they've come up with is a more graphical rendering for you to understand the relationship between various assets and where they're being used. You know, a good example is to think about a form. You know, a form can often be used uh, either in one location or potentially in many locations. And so if we need to make changes or we decide we want to archive, we really need to understand the dependencies and understand where that form is being used. So the dependency map is really going to help you make much better decisions also about reusing of assets, because it may be that there's no need to create a new form. You actually already have a form that will perform that exact same function. The uh, next part, let me, yeah, here we go. So this now is also helping you understand from an audit point of view, asset auditing, essentially. So at the moment, some of you will be aware that when you look at the current asset area of Eloqua from an audit point of view, usually through the Marketing Operations Center, you can see who last modified it, but that's usually about it, right? So what the enhanced auditing option is going to show you is, is a complete history, not just of the date and time and who did it, but actually what was done. So the key around what was done is going to be really helpful for a whole range of different reasons, but it will probably only be really helpful when you desperately need it. And you might desperately need it when something is broken. So maybe somebody's made some changes to something without fully understanding the ramifications of those changes. So by being able to go through an audit at this level of granularity, you'll be able to troubleshoot problems much faster. Um, when I shared this information with a couple of the team uh, support team, they were like, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> because often you call upon our team to help you troubleshoot some of these things. And so that will help speed that process up. So that's, uh, that's great news. All right, so seamless content creation. So CX content integration. So first of all, we've now left Eloqua. We've gone to another part of the uh, Oracle CX marketing uh, area or products, which is called CX content. And so CX content, is what is eventually going to work its way into Eloqua. It will be a free tier, so to speak, if that's the right term. There'll be a portion of that CX content product that will actually replace the current component library that you see within Eloqua. Now, that's exciting because it's a great product. It's a lot more functionality in it. It's going to be a, a significant improvement over what we have available today. Again, don't have dates on this one, but it will be will be helpful in many, many ways. So just to clarify for you, sorry, I should add this. So CS content is also a, a, a CMS essentially. So if you go to oracle.com today, that oracle.com navigation experience and website experience that you're having uh, is completely built within the CS content product. And so the part that will be coming into Eloqua is the just the content management piece, as in all of the images, files, and those sorts of things. You won't be able to build websites. Uh, if you decide you want to, and you want to look at Oracle to help you do that, like people like apple.com and others, uh, obviously oracle.com, um, they're absolutely, they, you know, Oracle has a range of solutions that you might want to explore. Account profiler and account score. So powerful insight for accounts at sales fingertips. So this is something that um, the team have been working on and I'm speaking with some of the product managers, I know this has been a particularly tough road uh, for them to get to because everybody, a lot of this information and data relies on the CRM and, and no two CRMs are really the same. There's some fundamentals that are pretty clear across you know, most CRM platforms, but a lot of people potentially over tailor <laughs> their CRM platforms. And so that's been a little bit of the challenge. That's why it's taken longer than they had hoped, but they're super close now to, to getting this live, which is very exciting, but it, it's going to give you the ability to view uh, an account as a, as a mini market all of its own, uh, looking at just the engagement of those particular contacts or people that belong to that particular account. So for instance, you'd be able to look at, you know, what's the top trending content in an account. So if you're running campaigns and you're presenting different types of products uh, for people to access or download, then you'll be able to look at the performance of those campaigns in the context of that one account. So that would be quite insightful to understand what's resonating within those, within that particular account. 
the usual things that you would hope to see, which is things like top engaged contacts within that account. That's always valuable. You know, is there intent? Are you seeing intent to buy? What are people looking at? You'll be able to consolidate and see that all within this dashboard view uh, of that one particular account. Now, if your organization doesn't work in this construct and doesn't have, so for example, some customers who might be using Salesforce CRM and might have the person account construct activated, then this is kind of not really for you. But for those who are in a more classic B2B environment, looking at account-based marketing, then this is definitely something for you to get excited about. <laughs> it's funny, second question, Phil, third question. This may be off topic, that's okay. You're allowed to be off topic. This may be off topic and I apologize. Is there a way to design one form submission for multiple contacts? For example, signing up a team to one event. Um, look, not natively, because natively a single form submission relates to a single contact, okay? So you're wanting, for instance, maybe like a, an EA or an executive assistant to fill in a form for, you know, 10 different people all at the same time. That's my understanding. I'd honestly have to go away and think about that one, uh, Alien, but um, let me... Let me go away and think about that one. We've, we'll, we've saved the Q&A, uh, et cetera. So let me do that and I'll go away and come back to you with an answer, if that's okay. All right, also coming, and uh, this one has been coming for quite a while, uh, which is part of the reason why some of you are using the Marketing Cube SMS application. We couldn't wait and nor could you. So native SMS channel coming to Oracle. Don't know much more at this stage other than it's going to be an SMS app just like you're using today. For those of you that are using the, the Marketing Cube app, no indication around pricing at this stage or how that's going to work. Is it US dollars? Uh, don't know. So need to, to find all of that information out. But the indication was uh, first half of next year potentially around this one. So as we get more information on that one, we will let you know. And then finally, some good to know. These are just some other things that are happening. They're not overly sexy or exciting, but they're just kind of good to know. The first one though, I think is kind of fun. It's always nice to get a little bit of a facelift, not personally, but for the platform. Uh, so Redwood, if you're looking at oracle.com, and maybe I can just very quickly show you. So if you've been to oracle.com or eloqua.com, this whole new experience, um, so visually these backgrounds and fonts and all the other bits and pieces that you see, uh, if I just click on anything, uh, this is called Redwood. And so Redwood is all of these imagery, et cetera, color tones, et cetera. So it's, uh, it's Redwood that is coming to Eloqua. So I've seen some initial uh, screenshots uh, of what that's going to look like. And look, at it's nice. It's nice and fresh and clean and different. So that'll be nice. So my understanding is we'll start to see something, I think, in November. And then probably they'll wrap that up in the first half of next year as they work their way through the platform. Bulk deletion of custom objects. Uh, these are all future enhancements. I should just qualify that as well. So the ability to be able to bulk delete custom objects. I know our support team will be super excited about that one. The addressing of stuck records in apps. Now there were certainly some enhancements, improvements that you saw already in relation to more granular and detailed reporting that help you identify when you have one. So you're looking at the campaign canvas and you see all the the numbers representing the number of people at different stages through your campaign, sometimes people get stuck, okay? And so when you double click on that little number and it opens up, uh, you've got much better reporting now, at least far more granular to understand what's going on. So is it the problem with a third party app that's failed for some reason, whole range of different reasons there. So they're working on that one, which is good. The notification center, the notification center is pretty limited, but there's getting enhancements to that or they're building out enhancements, which is good. Now program canvas parody work. I honestly, I could not find any more information than that. I mean, I understand what parody means to bring into balance with potentially. Um, so I, I'm not sure exactly what that means. So I will try to find out and come back to you. Ongoing CRM enhancements, so more uh, updates coming for the Oracle CX sales app, which is the Oracle CRM solution. Uh, the Salesforce app continues to get enhancements, which is great. Microsoft Dynamics um, native integration updates as well. So it 
that means native integration means coming into Eloqua, I think, versus an app or something. So we'll see how that one shapes out. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of uh, information that you didn't have before today. I think there's a number of exciting things on there, uh, things that we can look forward to. Some of them we'll start to see from what I understand in November, which is the next scheduled release of Eloqua. And then we should see more hopefully around the first half of next year. So there are two releases before the end of June next year. I think we're done. 11.56. I honestly thought we'd go over today because there was so much to share, but we got through it. So thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you making the time to, uh, to be with us. If you do have any further questions on any of the points that we've discovered today, please reach out to myself or any member of the Marketing Cube team. Uh, and remember for customers, if you have any of those uh, controlled availability functions that you'd like to activate, please email support at marketingcube.com.au and the team will uh, enable to or get that uh, taken care of for you. Have a wonderful day, stay safe, and we'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.